If you are interested in jumping into zoology too, but you want to know more about what you can expect, what do you need, and what do you have to look forward to, then you are in the right place because today we're going to cover all of that and more. So let's get started. Apologia Zoology 2 is one of the books in the Young Explorer series. These books are typically designed for kindergarten through sixth grade, but we definitely have flexed that a little bit on either side. While the Young Explorer series has lots of different books that you can choose from with different topics, the zoology series within this has three books. The first one is all about flying creatures. The second one is swimming creatures of the fifth day. And then the third one is all about land animals. You might be wondering if they have to be done in order since they're numbered one, two, and three. There are lots of benefits to doing them in order because they do kind of build on one another. However, there is a decent amount of review. So for instance, when they mentioned animal classification, which is something they cover extensively in Zoology 1, they mention it here, but then they also kind of refresh your memory on it for your kids. So you definitely can go out of order. We actually did book three last year, book two this year, and next year we'll be doing book one. Yes, we're a little backwards, but it is an awesome series that I highly recommend regardless of what order you do them. And it's so fun because it really goes into a lot of animals and creatures, which of course our kids tend to enjoy. This book has a total of 14 different lessons that you are going to complete in the year. And each lesson is going to take approximately two weeks to complete. It has lots of different ranges of topics. You have sea turtles and whales, fish, habitats, anthropods, and more. Within each chapter, you're going to have the amazing colorful pictures, the creation confirmation, showing how science confirms Christ's creation. There's a mixture of activities and experiments within each lesson, and then you can pick and choose which ones that you would like to complete. They also have a project that you can do at the end of every chapter that you build on throughout the entire year. We did not do that this year just due to some different circumstances in our family, but it is a really fun thing to do. This year it was building an ocean box starting in lesson two, and then you add different creatures or different items to your box as you go. So this is a really fun one, and we've actually done projects like this before, but done them in a wide variety of ways. You can either do a diorama like they suggest, you can build it. I've had my kids build these types of things before in Minecraft as they build like a world and then add different animals to it. I've had kids draw it out on paper. So there's lots of fun ways that you can incorporate that year long activity. A couple things to note is that in the appendix, you will find a list of all of the different supplies that are needed for every experiment. And you are also going to find an answer key to the what do you remember sections. In each lesson, they're going to have little kind of stopping points, so to speak, where your child is going to be asked a series of questions to check for understanding. These are great questions to ask your kids and to help lead to discussion, but sometimes you may not always know the answers. So you can then ask them the questions, go to the back and easily see the answers to make sure they understand the concepts well. All you need for this curriculum is the textbook, but they do have different options for you. You can get it in a hardback book like this. You can also now get it in an ebook format. So if you prefer to read off of a tablet, I've actually thought about before getting them and having it on my computer and then actually um, using AirPlay to show it on my TV so that my kids could follow along and be able to see all of the pictures while we are reading as well. So you can do a combination of those. You can also get the textbook on audio. Now I wouldn't get just the textbook on audio because there are so many amazing pictures and diagrams within this that you would miss out on. And honestly, I think it would be a little hard to understand without that context, but we do like having the audiobook option so that when mom gets tired and her voice gets weak from all the reading that we do in our homeschool, we're able to put that on in our living room or be able to listen to it in the car on the go. An optional add-on is the science journals. Now they have recently started to combine their science journals. In the past, they had a junior version and a regular version. With this set, they actually just have one version. And it's kind of nice because it blends the best of both. It's got color pages for your little ones. It's got labeling pages for your middle. And it even has a place for your older kids to be able to answer those what do you remember questions if you want to treat it more like a quiz 
or check for understanding or just even have this for your own personal records. Some of our favorite experiments from this past year have been doing the whale blubber experiment. This was the idea that we had our kids put their hands in ice cold water with just their bare hands and see how long that they could hold there for. And then they put on layers of things that kind of mimicked whale blubber to see how long they could hold their hands in for that. It was a really neat experiment to connect to the lesson and my kids that has really stuck with them and something they continue to talk about and understanding how those extra layers of protection of blubber on whales helps to keep them inflated and warm. Of course, also on the top experiments for this year has been making hagfish slime. Anytime there's any kind of reaction or explosion, as my kids like to say, it always ends up in the top favorite. So our kids really enjoyed making this simulation of the hagfish slime. The lesson on sea turtles was really interesting and it was neat to see how there was actually several different news stories about turtles this year on World Watch News. So my kids really enjoyed connecting that science piece with what's going on in the world and what they see in their other curriculum and programs. One of the activities that we did when it came to sea turtles is to have them scoot across the floor the same way sea turtles do. So they had their hands together and weren't able to use their hands to push them along. So they had to scoot like this across the floor to get to the finish line. And realizing how hard it is to pull all of your body weight as you drag across a long distance, just like these turtles do from the place that they lay their eggs back into the water, really kind of helped them to understand the concept better. We had lots of other experiments, of course, things like making our own sea plankton or our own puffer fish. We experimented with shells and understanding how fossils are made. And of course, we had a lot of fun with a huge Nerf war as we were learning about how mussels attach their eggs to other fish to be the carrier. And so our kids got to simulate that by selecting fish for their mussel eggs um, by shooting them with Nerf guns as they ran around to see if they could all find a host fish for their mussel eggs. This was such a great opportunity and Apology just does a really good job of having a mixture of sort of the typical messy <laughs> hands-on opportunities and experiences and having fun games or writing things or labeling activities that help bring learning to life. One thing that we did to adapt that might be helpful for you to know is that in the journals, there are several different pages that offer opportunities to label different parts of maybe a fish or a whale or the mollusks or whatever it might be. And this can be harder for younger kids to do, just the amount of writing. What I love about these journals is they're adaptable for all ages. So the older ones can definitely look at the pictures in the textbook and copy over the different labels. For my younger kids, I actually would type up the different labels and then they would cut them out and glue them onto the spot. This was a great way to adapt the curriculum to work best for their age group. And it was something that we could all enjoy together. In the front of these student journals, you'll actually notice a suggested schedule. And I love the new format that they have where it has check boxes for each of the days. Again, like I said, it's designed to be done over a two week period for one lesson and to only have to do science two days a week. So what I like to do was to rip out these pages and hole punch them and put them into my teacher notebook. I have three students, so I only did this with one of them. And then I was able to just check off the boxes as we went to make sure we got to the different things. It also has a suggestion in here as to which student pages you can use from the student journal. Obviously, we pick and choose what we enjoy using most. My girls love to do the lift the flat books. We do the labeling opportunities. We always do the coloring sheets, um, but we don't always do like the what do you remember section. We do that more orally. So I love the fact that they give you those options. If you wanna take it a step further, you can even date when you do each of these days, and that can work great for your homeschool record keeping. You should note that at the beginning of all of the textbooks for Apologia, there is a code that you can input on a website that will give you additional learning materials that you can use alongside this curriculum. I love this feature and I have found a lot of really neat things. Sometimes it'll be an online game to reinforce a concept or a video or an article. This is also great if you're working with a lot of different ages of kids. If you want your older kids to do some more research on something that's interesting to them, or you're looking for something fun to reinforce for younger ones, you can find a wide variation on that website using that code. All in all, I would say that Apologia Zoology 2 has been a big hit this year. They're all just really enjoying the zoology-based 
books. My older kids, when they were doing science with us, they tended to lean more towards the chemistry and physics or the earth science or those kinds of things. They enjoyed figuring out how our world worked, but my younger ones are definitely enjoying more focusing on the specific animals and learning more about specific habitats. We've been able to reinforce this with some fun magic school bus episodes or different YouTube videos. And it's just been a really fun experience for them. I'm hoping maybe this summer we can sneak off to the aquarium and take a little field trip there to help reinforce the things they've learned as well. If you want to learn more about some of the other apologia sciences out there and some of our thoughts on those, be sure to check out this video here.